Hi, so I just wanted to show the FMOD session for my adaptive music test in Unity. And what I have here is three different uh, looping stems that were composed by the composer Mikhail Palioglu. I'll put a link to his site down in the description. He's an awesome composer. Uh, luckily, have a friend of mine. Music is not my um, speciality, so I leave that over to the pros, and he's done an awesome job. So I will just show you um, the different loops that I've got here that increase in intensity as you go through this um, test level. So the first one, um, so these are event sounds, so they house uh, the different loops inside them, and I just have a loop region set over the whole track so that as it plays it will um, continue to loop for as long as the player is in this region of the map so you can hear it's just an ambient track and the cool thing that uh, Mikhail did was to um, make this kind of non-rhythmic so that at any point that the player hits the trigger and goes into the next kind of intensity level on the map um, we can just jump straight into the next loop. So you hear that loop there. So the next one, loop two, is much more um, intense kind of battle music still with the strings. So I'll play that now. Also got a loop region around it, so it will continue to play. So you can hear much more epic, much more up-tempo. So we have a third one which is adding some more percussion and drums when you get into the real intense part of the level. So um, loop two and loop three, um, they're perfectly synced and that was kind of the challenge, if you will, in this part of it was to be able to uh, seamlessly switch between those um, on the beat. So we'll continue to the next beat and then jump over to the next loop once the level intensity is increased. So I'll just start playing this session. Um, yeah, so I've got those three loops and then I also have one trigger sound when you first jump from the kind of ambient loop into the uh, first intense session. So I have this um, awesome sting that he's created. And then um, I've got a couple of fades. So I wanted to make sure that the player, uh, when they jumped from loop two back to loop one, there would be a fade. And if they jumped from loop three back to loop one, there would also be another fade. So I'll go into those uh, a little bit later. But just to show you kind of the build and intensity, I'll just start here. So I've set the tempo, 120 tempo marker, and I have this loop region, it's just an arbitrary um, loop region, and then these awesome transition regions, meaning that at any point um, that the level intensity gets increased while it is playing inside this loop region, it will um, jump over to the next marker. So this goes to the start of stem two. And if it happened um, that the player goes from loop one all the way up to the most intense, loop three, you'll see if it goes above 70, then it will jump over and into the final loop here. So let me just play it and I'll kind of ex um, demonstrate what happens. So with intensity zero, you can see it will loop inside here and it will play the sound housed inside the first loop region. And now I'm going to set it to go between 30 and 70. So that would simulate when the player hits the trigger. So as soon as they go over that trigger point, it's going to jump uh, to stem to start. It's going to start playing loop two. It's going to play this sting noise as well. And the other key to it is it's going to start playing the third loop as well. Now I'll show you in a second, but I have it automated so that the volume will be down so that you don't hear loop three but the, the key to this was that both loops are playing simultaneously so that when you jump 
they will be synced, it will uh, match rhythmically between them. So, I'll just trigger the next intensity level here. You can see you jump straight away to that um, second loop, much more intense. Played the trigger, and now it's gone past the trigger and it is looping, sorry, the sting sound, and it is now looping inside this next loop region. So, um, we have two options that the player could do. Either they could return to the ambient zone and decrease the tempo, or they can um, move to the next intensity level. So I will just take you up a notch. So um, this here to stem three, trigger region. You can see it has these lines here. That means that it's been quantized. So I'll just show you. Jumps up. And you can also just jump back. So what's happening there is these lines are counting the beats in the um, in the loops. So as I said, they're both playing simultaneously. And because of the loop region's trigger, how it's set between 70 and 30 and quantized to a whole uh, to a single beat. Once the um, intensity goes above 70, it will wait until this next green line until the beat's completed and it will jump over to the stem 3 loop. So it will go to stem 3 loop and it will loop inside here. And you can see um, we've got the volume set so that when it jumps, stem 2 fades out and stem 3 has come in. Just close those just so that it's not too messy. Oh, sorry. So let me just demonstrate that one more time. If we're above 30 and below 70, it will be playing in this loop here. And as soon as we give it an intensity above 70, it will wait until the next green line, the next beat, and it will jump over into that stem 3 loop. It will fade out. Uh, loop 2, and it will bring in the volume for loop 3, so I'll we'll just trigger that now. And back again. So it does do a, a hard cut, that's sort of what we wanted, so the music was composed so that um, the beats would be very strong, and as long as it waited until that beat was finished, and then switched between those different loops it would um, still sound consistent but uh, you know obviously change the intensity so as I mentioned there's also the possibility that the, the player goes down in intensity so I have this other loop region now instead of just sending it um, straight back to the first stem that would be a hard cut it wouldn't sound so good I wanted to program a bit of a fade so that Whichever uh, loop 2 would fade out and loop 1 would fade in. So I'll just show you the automation for that. So as I said, this one, if we are in the above 30 and we go below 30, it's going to send it over to this one, the 2 to 1 fade. And you can see here, um, track 2 is going to fade out slowly and I've brought in the reverb as well just so that it um, becomes a little bit more ethereal. And you can just see here that stem one will fade in. And then it's going to hit this trigger region. And sorry, this um, uh, not a trigger region, it's just a trigger. And it's going to send it um, over to. Um, sorry, it's a transition. That's not what it's called. It's just a transition marker. Instead of a transition region, it's just a transition marker. So these fades are going to play. The reverb's going to come on and then it will just loop back to number one. So I'll just show you that. So we're in 30. And the player is going to retreat from the action. And we will send the intensity down to zero. You can hear it fade out. And then the second one comes in. So I thought that was quite a uh, good way of doing it. And as you can see, I've got the events 
made sure that they're playing the whole time so that there won't be a jump. It won't go back to the start of that loop. It will just keep playing it seamlessly. So I'll just go through that one more time. So when we go above 30, it's going to send it to where, where loop 2 is playing. Get that sting. It's going to sit in there and loop. And then we'll reduce the intensity. We'll go to the fade region. And then be back in that first looping sequence here. Hello. So we'll just run up through them again and I'll show you my fade from the third intensity, the third loop, um, back down to loop one. So oh, hold on. I'll just show you the fades for that first. So same thing when we're playing in loop three. Um, if you happen to reduce, you know, leave the intense region of the map and just go back to your normal transition that's here. So if it drops below 30 while you're inside this loop, it is going to send it to the 3 to 1 fade. So you can see here, track 1 is going to fade in. And track 3 is going to fade out. Again, we have the reverb coming in and I added uh, the high pass cutoff as well so that it will kind of pull away from you. And then just this little transition pad as well to add a little bit more, a little bit more color to it, which just has a bit of volume and also the high pass coming through it. So I'll just show you what that sounds like. We're going to go all the way up to the uh, highest intensity. And when the player leaves that region, when we drop back to lowest intensity, it will send over here to the 3 to 1 phase. back in the loop again so that was that was it that, that's kind of um, all of the possible changes that the, the player could go through and um, as I said the key to it was having these events stretched throughout the whole timeline wherever they'll be playing so that they maintain their um, their tempo at all times they're always linked it doesn't just start from the beginning of the track once you move over now um, the other cool thing is I made sure that during these fades uh, it is possible in the level for the player to walk back into the intensity region while the fade is going on. So I have more transition regions here. So I'll just show you if we're in highest intensity we go down to lowest intensity and the fade's happening but they walk back in then it will also trigger whichever region they're in. Hope that makes sense. Uh, you, sh you can check out the full um, Unity project on my website, hellolooklisten.com. Uh, there'll be downloadable versions so that you can actually play them and uh, a YouTube playthrough as well.